بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continue on in our study <coughs> of the concise presentation of the creed of ahl sunnah wal jamaa we were in the introduction we were in one of the introductions uh, of the treaties and this was uh, in accordance with the introduction of Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala and in his introduction he mentioned with the about the importance of creed and importance of studying this particular text as he emphasized and he did an introduction for the text and emphasized that it is a valuable text uh, with regards to the subject matter he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem kul hadhihi sabili ad'u ila Allah ala basira ana wa man attaba'ni wa subhanallah wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says addressing the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said say and this was addressing the prophet telling the prophet to say this say this is my way i invite unto Allah My, uh, with sure knowledge, I and whosoever follows me, and glorified and exalted is Allah, and I am not of the mushrikun, meaning the polytheists. The Shaykh then said, it is the creed of the saved sect, about whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed of. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي قائم قائمة بأمر الله لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a famous famous hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم a party in my ummah will remain on Allah's order. Anyone who deserts them will not be able to harm them until Allah's decree will come to pass and they will remain on that same, in that same state. So this lets us know the importance of da'wah Allah. And this lets us important the, uh, know the importance of seeking ilm and nafi, a beneficial knowledge, because you need beneficial knowledge in order to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to have knowledge as part of the fiqh of, uh, of da'wah is that uh, the, the, the caller has knowledge about what they're calling to and of course that means Islam or Sunnah and that they have knowledge of the people they're inviting so if they're from a particular community a particular culture that they have knowledge about those people in order to be able to reach them, to be able to address them in accordance with their customs so that they will understand the haq and accept it easier. And likewise, having general fiqh of da'wah and understanding of how and the, and the wisdom of how to convey the message of Islam and the message of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet ﷺ let us know that this saved sect, meaning those people who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they practice the haq, and they invite to the haq, and they're patient upon the haq, that they are the successful ones, and that no one can harm them. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق There won't cease to be a group from my nation that continues to be on the truth. This is Ahlul Sunnah. This is the Salaf al -Sareh, or the Salafiyun. This is Ahl Athar. This is Ahl Hadith. And that's what, as Imam Bukhari and the Shaykh of Bukhari, and many of them, they said that if, when, in, in explaining this Hadith, they said, if it is not Ahl Hadith, then I don't know who it is. Meaning that this description of the saved sect, of those people who are saved from the hellfire in general, 
Not meaning as individuals. That doesn't mean because you say you're Salafi or because you're saved from Ahadith that you're saved. La. But it means those people who truly practice that. Practice that uh, and they have that correct uh, Aqidah, that correct creed, and that correct methodology of uh, delivering that, that creed and practicing that creed. And all of those things which uh, are a part of following the uh, Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those are the ones who make up the saved sect of Firqa Tanajia, the saved sect. Why? They're saved from what? They're saved from the fire as a group. But as individuals, of course, all of us, we have our shortcomings. Some of us are sinners, but they might have generally the correct Aqidah. Some of us, uh, some, some of us, Wallah Mista'an, are Fusak. You know, that they have a lot of sin, major sins, but yet their general creed is the creed of Ahl Sunnah. So they're still from Ahl Sunnah, but yet they are a wicked sinner from Ahl Sunnah who will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people have some form of bid'ah that they fall into, or they're jahil, or whatever the case may be. And this shows us that Ahl Sunnah mutafawwitun or mutafawwitin wa ahl bid'ah mutafawwitin. The Ahl Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah, they have different levels and they have different uh, levels of practice and understanding. Our level is not like the uh, scholars. And the scholars are not like the big ulama, rasikhun fil ilm. So there's different levels. And the lay person is not like the Talib al-ilm. And the Tawail al-ilm is not like the Talib al-ilm. The, the small student of knowledge is not like the one who's grounded in Masail, that's, a, that's a, a, a bigger student of knowledge. So people have different levels and they can all be from Ahl Sunnah. Likewise, Ahl Bid'ah, and this is what we have to know too and understand, and many people seem to fail in understanding this, that Ahl Sunnah, that Ahl Bid'ah also has different levels. That you cannot equate the grave worshipper who makes du'a to Abdul Qadir al Jilani or makes uh, du'a to any of the saints or even of the wicked people to be the, like the one who has some small bid'a. Maybe they do something, uh, something that goes against the sunnah or they have some mistakes in menhaj or whatever the case may be. But it shows us that people have different levels. Likewise, the Asha'ira, they have their, uh, in general, they make ta'wil of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They explain it in a different way, in a different way from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, in a different way from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, going against the text of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They take a very metaphorical uh, in interpretation of the text. Whereas Ahl Sunnah takes a very little, literal, for because there's safety in the literalism. There's safety and say that Ar Rahman Al Ars Istawa. He rose above his throne. And we we accept that. We don't say you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his divine hikmah used that Ibara, said this in his kalam, in his speech, that he rose above his throne. So we accept that. We don't have to say, oh, it means power. It means this because it fits my intellect better. It makes my heart feel more comfortable. I'm afraid to make a likeness between the law and his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this about himself. So we say it. But we say also those other kawa'id that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْهُ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ That there is nothing like unto him. Nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No likeness in his creation. Well, likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees everything. So, in the name, yes, I hear and see. You hear and see. You, If you're listening to this lecture, you're here. If you see the video, you see. But your hearing and seeing is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, there is a resemblance in the name, yes. In that it's a simma. Well, basal. However, the there is no likeness between Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's creation in those uh, attributes themselves, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala hears and sees everything, and we don't know the uh, reality or the kafiya 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes. We don't know how, we don't ask how. And this goes back to the statement of Imam Malik when he was asked while teaching in the Haram, teaching in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid, he said, uh, he was asked, uh, Ya Abu Ya Abdillah, Kaba is Stoa. When when the verse uh, uh, when Imam Malik uh, perhaps recited the verse or was explained the verse, uh, this man said, Kaba is Stoa. You know how how does uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala rise above His throne? How I want to know. I want to know and get into the to the details. You know, or perhaps it was from his shibahat that he was trying to cause doubt. Imam Malik said, a cave majhul, al istawa ma'lum, wa kaif majhul, wa sual anhu bid'a, wa kama qala Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala. So he said that the cave, the how, is unknown. The, uh, the fact that uh, 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 istawa is ma'lum, it's known, it's known rising. We know what that means in the Arabic language. It's no mystery, there's no other meaning for it. Istawa, we know what it means. So that's ma'lum. And it's ma'lum from the Quran. It says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says himself that he rose above his throne. So that's ma'lum, that's known. al kafiya majhul. How is unknown? al kafiya Majhul, how is unknown. And then he said, Wusual anhu bida. And asking about it is an innovation in the religion. So this shows us the great trap that many of the early groups, where they went astray with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes, because this is really where a lot of the early sects of bida they began. They began, like we had the Khawarij. They made takfir, uh, rebelled against the uh, Muslim authority, and at the time that was the Sahaba radiallahu fighting the Sahaba, and they made takfir of them, you know, made takfir of the Muslims for the Kabira. They had jahil, they had other sifat. Likewise, the Qadariya, the Qadariya, they uh, distorted the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Some of them said that we're forced. How can we be held responsible? for sin, sinfulness, because we're, uh, if, if everything's by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are decreed to do this, so I'm not responsible. This is the Jabriya. Jabriya. And then you had the other, uh, other levels of Ahl Bidah, which this shows us also that Ahl Bidah Mutafawit, as we mentioned, that they have different levels, that you had other uh, people from the Qadariya who had a lighter distortion. Some even saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't know everything, that Allah, that it was outside of his decree, and that this was, uh, and, the, and their various arguments. And then you had the other groups like the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, and the Asha'ira a little bit later, who distorted the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So without getting into details about each one of those groups and sects, and in fact, they're sects, not uh, not really groups, as we say in the contemporary times. We talk about a Khwana Muslimin. Khwana Muslimin is not a sect, really. They are a uh, a his or a group. You know, they are united together by a political ide ideology. From amongst them, you might find Sufis. From amongst them, you might find people who have uh, aqidah generally of Ahl Sunnah. You, from amongst them, you might have those. Uh, you know, all kind of other. It's a God, but they unite it. They don't have a, a pure uh, a characteristic in creed, necessarily. Not like the Jehemiah or Mu'tazila or the Asha'id or, or the Khawarij. Likewise, other groups uh, that are, are Jama'at, Mu'asira, like uh, Jama'at Tablik and others. So they are a group that is not united necessarily on a particular creed, although they they generally come from a Sufi background, uh, Naqshbandi or Diobandi, and uh, so they have this Tasawwuf. But uh, from amongst their movement, you'll find people that are uh, that are supporters of a Khan Muslimin and that have a lot of political activism. You will you even have some that have generally the correct aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. That they, they don't make ta'wil of sifat. You have those from amongst. Then you have those who have ashari creed. So you have many different 
uh, i'tiqad and creed amongst those jama'at, which differs between the sect. A sect is something, and a group is something, and this is some of the tafsil, some of the details that Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh mentioned uh, in, a, in a lecture that I recall from many, many years ago listening to, uh, that where he distinguished that, that very important point. Getting back to the text, though. Uh, then the Sheikh said, and this is the same party which exists today on the same path on which the Holy Prophet and his companions were upon. The Prophet said, uh, the Prophet said, the Jews broke into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my women 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? I said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon al hand. So that shows us that our salvation, to be from the same sect, we have to follow the Salaf al-Saleh, we have to follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Uh, based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and that that is our salvation that is our that's what we're ordered to follow is by looking in the Sunnah so my advice to my brothers and sisters is keep getting into Bukhari keep getting into Muslim and this is advice to myself first and foremost and, and getting into those those and of course the Quran and so that way you have you can ground yourself in the usul of the religion and in, in, in the basic basis of the religion and strengthen your heart and and know what Islam is so that when when you hear something strange from someone who has a deviant creed or has something or has perhaps just has a mistake not not even that they are a deviant themselves but they've just made a mistake you will have the tools to be able to measure those statements to measure to put anyone's scale uh, uh, statements on those scales the more knowledge you have the more it enables you to uh, to evaluate uh, the statements of others, regardless of whether it be from the ulama or whoever, that you can evaluate that because the ulama they differ over issues, and this is this is when you do talib al it gives you the tools to be able to distinguish, hopefully haq from batil as much as you're able to, depending on your level of of talib al -Aim. Then the sheikh mentioned. Something very important, uh, I just want to end with this. He said, and uh, Allah has bestowed his favor on many of our scholars in a group amongst the sincere students of knowledge to teach, research, and write on this topic. Our brother, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Abdul Hamid al-Afari, is counted as one of these sincere per per uh, personalities as he has explained this topic with great care in his book, A Concise Presentation of the Creed of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. So this is the introduction that I wanted to kind of get into before we got into the text. The text is a bit longer, so I'm not sure if we're going to study it, uh, you know, read it through in detail like that. Maybe we'll just take key points because uh, my time is very limited and it will take a long time to finish this, this text. But we will go through it uh, as much as we can to benefit when I have free time to sit and, and do so as I am incredibly... Uh, bogged down or, or busy at this uh, this time. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. May Allah bless us with ilm al-nafiyah, ruz kan tayyibu, ilm al-mutaqabbin, anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.